here we are, undisclosed location south of downtown with the one, the only, Mr. Gabe Garcia. Welcome. How's it going, everybody? Oh, there's a train. Of course, the train would start right when we <laughs> get going now here. Now know where we're at. Um, welcome to Texas Made, man. We've hey. been playing some music already on the radio and everything, and this is just a great opportunity to sit down and chat and for the Y100 family to get to know you a little better. Yeah. So how's uh, everything going, by the thanks, way? Thanks for having me, first of all, and, uh, and everybody out there, too, that's always supported me, and uh, they're always excited to hear that you know you are playing my stuff. So yeah. and having uh, Texas music back on radio in San Antonio, it's pretty exciting. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that just needs to be done, so I'm glad y'all yeah. brought, brought that back. We were excited to do it. When I got voluntold that we were doing a Texas show, I was all about it, and uh, it wasn't like I was like, oh, man, like this stinks. No, like I was super fired up about it, and then obviously we get to play um, all the Texas guys we love, and we get to showcase um, a lot of folks here, though, too. And, dude, you've been yeah. here a long time. People are always like, play some Gabe Garcia, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I have pretty, pretty good uh, uh, low fans around here in these parts. I mean, I'm, I'm just, you know, down the road from Lytle, so it's not too far. And uh, I've been playing these these dance halls and bars shoot, probably since I was, you know, 19, yeah. 18 years old. So getting into bars and uh, and playing music and and uh, just getting that fan base around here for sure. But yeah. It's well, been a long time. Well, just to kind of set it up a little bit, though, too, um, I, I think we met officially, I guess it was like last year sometime, um, I'd known who you were. I knew some of your music. Um, I didn't know too much, but then it seems like probably like the last year or so though, too, like I run into you like everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, I like your comment the other day. It was like, does Gabe Garcia ever rest? Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I, yeah, I've been blowing and going all past months. It's crazy. Well, if folks haven't had an opportunity to see you, we're definitely going to encourage them to come check you out real soon. I know, um, Talk about some spots that you do play regularly. I've seen you at Pinkerton several times, great barbecue over there. Yeah. And then you're just doing, like, the acoustic thing. Yeah, uh, like, lately I've been doing a lot of acoustic stuff, too, because I just, uh, I mean, like I said, I've been playing for so long, and, and it's nice to just kind of, I don't know, and a lot of people love acoustic stuff. So it's just, and there's a lot of places that have been popping up and just doing a lot of acoustic outdoor things. And, yeah. And, and it's kind of relaxing, and uh, I, I just kind of been keeping the band stuff for, like, you know, more festivals or, like, other events that we do. But saw, saw the full band events. at Rodeo the other day. Yeah, full so. band at Rodeo. I mean, just events like that. But I, I'm sure I'll get back. Cause I, like, Mario and Ari, Mario Flotas and I are, are starting to do a lot of stuff together, too. Yeah. And, and that's a good thing because a lot of those places like to have, like, two artists in one band kind yeah. of thing. And, and uh, so, which is cool, too. So, and, uh, I mean, and recently my <laughs> drummer just took off to, uh, to uh, Indiana so uh, Rodeo was his last gig. Oh, okay, rodeo that's convenient. Last, yeah, Rodeo was his What's last What's your drummer's gig. name? Kyle. Thanks a lot, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> Left us hanging. Thing, he, where he, he, he went to go work for us. <laughs> well, not for the train. <laughs> Train's back. <laughs> he, okay. uh, he did go work for uh, Sweetwater. Okay. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah so, I've... Well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I've ordered stuff from them before, yeah, like so DJ like, stuff. Can I just yeah. make my uh, wish list right now? Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Hold on, let's just, train, let's, let's train, just pause a sec. I'm, I'm gonna just say this right now, and I've I've played your music for some folks that um, were not familiar with your music, and uh, everybody's like blown away by your voice. You have one of the best voices I've ever heard, and especially when you're just doing your thing, just just you, yeah, so good, just, so good. So it's like if you haven't out. heard Gabe, like this is the real Gabe <laughs> Garcia, ladies and gentlemen. Um, How'd you get your start, though, man? Like, you've been doing this a long time, though, like you said. Like, how'd yeah. you get your start? I know, like, you went to Nashville. Like, tell us the whole story. We want to hear about everything. From the be very beginning, uh, like, when I was, like, elementary-wise, um, I guess you could, you could tell that you could at least sing in tune, you know, or you don't have the a crappy voice or whatever. Yeah. And uh, it was a music class in elementary, and there was this girl that was, like, the teacher's pet, and she played piano and sang at the church and did all this, but... So she was like, the teacher was just loved her, and I was like, man, like I know I can give her a competition and sing, you know, but I was always, you know, too embarrassed or didn't want my friends to make fun of me or anything. So uh, that that all went on, and I, I went through phases of different things uh, growing up, and then uh, I was probably about 14ish, 15. My um, my brother sang, <clears throat> he sang for a while, but that's back when like we had the. The little uh, sound choice cassette tapes with the karaoke, yeah, karaoke yeah. stuff, and uh, and so my uh, my dad was a city councilman in Lido, and so he had my brother sing at all the city events. Yeah, there you go. And so there was a uh, one event. So he started going. To, uh, he was going to go to college in at Southwest Texas, uh, Texas State, and uh, so uh, he had a couple of things he had to play for still. My dad was 
it was like, man, like, I, I, I really don't even remember where the first time they heard me. Because so when my brother and everybody would leave the house, I would go into his room and I would, I would get the tapes and sing songs. And yeah. I had the blinds open a little bit so I knew my parents or anybody yeah. was pulling up. And when I'd see him, I'd just put everything Doing it up, in boom, secret. I, yeah. And I, oh, you know, my goodness. So for, for a couple of years, I, 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 at least I did that. And then um, I don't even know how they heard me or what. I, I, that I, I really don't remember. And um, so my dad was like, hey, well, my son Gabe sings. And so I had my first uh, public show. It was for the uh, uh, Baptist uh, Church for a, a Valentine's dinner. Yeah. For Valentine's dinner. My brother was supposed to do it, and so my dad had me do it. And I hadn't learned guitar yet, so I was just singing along with the tapes. But uh, that was my first my first gig, and I was probably like uh, maybe – 15-ish around there, uh, 14, 15 years old, and then uh, I taught myself guitar uh, when I was 16. My brother left the guitar; he was supposed to learn, yeah, and never, never, uh, he didn't really pick it up. He, took, he didn't take it to school, thank goodness. So he left it there, so I picked it up. There you uh, go. My uncle gave me an old Mel Bay guitar book and taught myself. I was just after school went straight to my room, practice, 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 and uh, but yeah. So, but I went. I ended up going to Nashville for the first time when I was 14. To go record a couple songs. Uh, okay. In Nashville. My, That's early too, yeah, man. That's young. My buddy, my brother's uh, friend from high school, uh, worked for a publishing company up there. He moved from Lytle to Nashville, and and uh, he was working for a publishing company, and, uh, and he knew of me and my voice and everything, and so uh, we went up there and cut two songs up there. And, and was uh, your voice deep yet, or no, or, or no, was it? No, it was pretty, it, it pretty high. Okay, yeah, pretty okay. High pitch, and then, uh, it hadn't it hadn't really no. settled. It hadn't settled down yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can you can go to uh, yeah you can go to my website and uh, there's a there's a so. My website, there's my album when I was 17. Yeah. So I went back when I was 17 years old and recorded my first full-length album Jeez. when I was 17. And uh, cause my, my, we always used to go to South Padre Island for a uh, for family vacation. And, and my dad would, was always looking at the paper, like, see what was going on. And, and it said, Nashville songwriter playing at the at the Radisson Hotel. So, my, of course, my dad would go over there. And uh, he asked the guy if I could sing. And. I get up there and uh, and which I hated because I hated being put on the spot all the time. And, uh, <laughs> me and my dad would always get into it all the time, and so you're like, still no. like that. You're yeah. still like that. I, like, I no, know no, this. No, don't, don't, don't let me sing. And uh, so I get up there, saying about I don't know, about four songs, whatever. And the guy is just blown away, and he's like, well, "Y'all need to come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow." So we went back the next day, and uh, uh, I probably played for like an hour. Yeah, played for like an hour, and uh, that was back when they had the cassette tape still. And so it was, uh, you know, donate. Ten dollars, ten dollar donation, get a free tape. So um, my dad ended up contacting the guy, and and so he ended up. We went to Nashville, and uh, he produced my first record when I was seventeen. And, nice. And uh, just kept going on from there. Just kept kept, kept going. Uh, started my first band when I was about eighteen. Uh, they were out of Pearsall, which my guitar player, like we we're saying, my my drummer took off. And yeah. We were together for yeah. about. about seven eight years thanks kyle yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we were together about seven eight years and uh, uh my guitar player that still plays with me uh he was part of my first band when we were 18 nice and, and he's still uh he's still he's still gigging with me so we'll probably be doing a lot of the acoustic stuff together and good stuff. good yeah, like we used to for a long time we used to do that so i'm kind of looking forward to some of those little gigs like that too but so. you really got this going very early and then what was like what was like that moment where it was like okay like next level like go time um, well back so i was dating a girl from divine and her uncle uh knew a couple guys from hondo yeah which was uh bill and bart butler okay and uh so bill he's actually a retired pharmacist at the hb there in hondo but he also has a publishing company which uh he published uh, baby blue love without an amen all these songs he had a studio there in hondo yeah where uh, johnny bush and a lot of these guys would come and record and so uh so my girlfriend's uncle introduced me to them and said, hey, you need to listen to this kid. Because uh, they would always have big parties at the ranch. And her uncle played music and yeah. always had musicians, full band parties and everything. like. Come play. Come yeah. out. So, of course, I was in the f- yeah. part of the family, so yeah. I was playing. So, uh, so Bill came out, and then he's like, you know what? I'm going to call my son Bart to come down from Nashville. So I played, uh, and I think I was probably opening for, for Fowler down at uh, uh, Bedini County Fair. Okay. And um, so... Bart comes down and he's blown away. So we ended up working together, and that was probably about, I would say like '04, yeah, '04 around there. And uh, so Bart and I wrote a bunch of songs that I've had on my albums. He produced my first couple records, and uh, the last three I've I've produced myself. But uh, uh, I mean, Bart just and Bill just introduced me to the whole Nashville part of it, and um, 
I was going back and forth doing projects with them. Uh, that's how I got the label interest mm-hmm. uh, was through Bart too, and uh, him playing me playing songs. Like he would always, he'd go to the labels, and uh, it's a funny thing because uh, he he'd go to the labels and he'd play on my stuff, but he would never tell them my name. Yeah, he just say anything. He's like, "What are you thinking?" They're like, "Dude, like, just like Sony, RCA, or yeah." And, uh, and who is this kid yeah, with the voice? Like, this kid? Yeah. They're like, "Guess what? His name's Garcia Gabriel." And they're like, "What?" Yeah. And it was because that was a thing. That was a thing back then too. Uh, <laughs> they were um, looking for that Hispanic artist again. The kind of like you know, nobody's been around since Johnny Rod, Freddie Fender, yeah. and yeah. Emilio, and, and um, so that was kind of a big thing going on too with that because the market was just getting flooded with Hispanic uh, fans and everything. Emails were just going everywhere about, about that. And uh, So he got me set up with a, a showcase in Divine. Uh, hey, it's moving again. my turn. Bart Butler, uh, he's the uh, one that got me connected with uh, the labels over there. So I ended up meeting with, uh, doing a showcase in Divine, Texas, uh, uh, for Sony Records. Mm-hmm. So Sony Records came down. And um, I did a showcase for them, and, and it was, they, I mean, they loved me. They were just like, you need to move to Nashville. And, uh, like, probably a week or two later after Sony came down, RCA caught wind of it. So Joe Galani, who signed Chesney, Brooks and Dunn, everybody, he flew me up and uh, paid my, my flight and everything and uh, and had a meeting with him and the, the two A&R people. And same thing, he it's like, we love you, but you need to move up here. So yeah, that was kind of a thing, too, because I, when I was 19, I started working for CPS, CPS Energy, and, so all my vacation was going back and forth, and uh, my dad was really like strict with us too. You know, my mom, and they were just, you know, I had a great job, you yeah. know, a young age, and but they knew I wanted to move to Nashville. Yeah, that's and, awesome and, that people are coming down, and I mean, all this stuff started like just out in the country. Like my my grandparents lived in Hondo since like um like they would just go well, out there to probably, hunt. They probably, they probably know Bill. Probably, Bill probably they're they're not around anymore. But uh, I'm um, sure if they went and got their meds with. With Bill at the Probably, pharmacy. <laughs> man. Yeah. That's, that's wow. Small world. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're like somebody like that to be like, oh, my pharmacist is a. Yeah. Well, in like, in, in Hondo, everybody knew everybody kind of. Yeah. yeah. Especially like, you know, back like, yeah, like 20 years ago, though, too. For sure. Yeah. So um, that kind of got that, that, that start with the whole Nashville thing. And I learned a lot through them, too, as far as like the whole business. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, like a lot of artists go up there and they have no clue what's going on. They just yeah. want to go and they think they're going to get a record deal like that. Yeah, it's no. Like, it's like, man, it's called the music business for a reason. You yeah. Know, you got to know the whole thing. Yeah. Like not just, and, and, that's, and that's why I was happy to be with Barton Bill, too, to, to get educated and, and, and uh, know the business and how it works besides singing. You know, singing's mm-hmm. a big, yeah, it's a good part of it. Yeah, you obviously know, be good, but there's other stuff, yeah, too. Yeah, a lot of stuff. I mean, because it's, it's, you know, a lot of things you got to sign for, your publishing and your this and that. So uh, I was fortunate to, like, know how to read contracts and knew with everything and all the lingo all that stuff just a lot of things but uh um, so yeah, you, you I, pulled the trigger on it you're like all right I'm going to nashville well <clears throat> that kind of uh, was a little thing too so i hadn't i wanted to like i said my dad everybody was still kind of iffy about it and and so 2007 uh my dad passed of a heart attack just mm. gone like that and so it made me look at life differently and was like you know it's life short you never know when it's time to go so I, uh, I I sold sold my house and uh, quit CPS after eight years. I would have been there 23 years. If I would have stayed there, uh, but I left after eight and uh, just took everything with me and took off to Nashville. Like probably yeah. he passed away October 07. I quit CPS in November 07, and then uh, January 2008 I took off and moved in with another guy from Hondo uh, named uh, Davey Olbrick. Okay. And uh, so I moved in with Davey and lived with him about three months. Okay. And he's actually, uh, so I guess I, I, unless you wanted to save it later with the, with the, the, the John party. Tell me about story. John. Where does John come okay, into the so, story? So Davey, so Davey <laughs> ended up meeting John back uh, like a while back. And John was still a kid. John, so when John moved to Nashville, he was 22. I was 28. And um, so Davey was like, hey, I got this kid. Uh, coming to Nashville, uh, you need to go pick him up and yeah. take him around. He you needs know, a couch to sleep yeah. on or something too, probably. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So he, well, he was actually, I go to pick him up and um, he's in a, ba- he's in a, in a basement, uh, in a house with like three other guys mm-hmm. in, in a bed, just in a basement. You like, have pictures from around this time? Cause I want to drop some pictures <laughs> like right here. I do, I do have some pictures. We'll get them. We'll get them. We'll, we'll <laughs> put them in. We'll put them in a post here. He might kill me. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> we'll just blur John out. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> sorry no, he, in advance, uh, man. Yeah, it was, yeah, screw it. But uh, no, so 
I go pick up John and, and um, like I said, we hang out. We we, we uh, become we 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 hit, we hit it off and and so we end up moving uh, moving in together. So we end up getting to town home and and I was actually like right. I mean, even the Nashville Star thing is a whole story. There's there's like so yeah. many stories. It's like we can go on and on of how I got on there and how the, there's a lot of. Like, feel like we have to like, the timeline of this. Gabe Garcia. <laughs> Dude, for real, we got time, nuts. man. Yeah, let's, let's so, talk about it. You know. Okay. So okay. So, so during that time, okay, <laughs> before John and I moved in together, so Davey had this couple, uh, or his friends that um, they lived in, uh, in in Corpus, and uh, they had a, a, some friends of theirs that were getting married, and they needed a wedding singer kind of thing. And so I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And uh, so they bought my flight, room. A uh, bottle of Gentleman Jack, just uh, everything yeah. all set up. Yeah. And so, I get a call from uh, NBC and casting people, and uh, and I, like I said, I was living at Davies still, and uh, so I get a phone call, and they're like, uh, "We got you down for callbacks for National Star," and this, and I'm like, "What are you talking about? I, like, I never signed up for nothing." And uh, they're like, well, somebody gave us your name and this and that. And I'm like, all right, well, I don't know. Now I'm on this show. I was like, when is it? Yeah. I was like, when is the, the, the tryouts? And they're like, well, this is like the last of the tryouts. You know, everybody already went through. And yeah. I can say this now. Like, yeah. Who cares uh, uh, how, how I got on there and everything. But uh, so, you know, they had already gone through all the city. So Nashville was like the final city for everything. And I think like 5,000, uh, like I think – Seventy something thousand people tried out or something. Everyone like Everyone in Nashville yeah, and, and, and yeah, Tennessee and, 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 yeah, <laughs> showed up. The place and and uh, so the, this is like final five thousand, and, and it was narrowed down to like the top hundred, then fifty, then the fourteen on the show. Yeah, and uh, so uh, I'm asking the lady. I was like, so when when is this? And she's like, well, it's this weekend. I'm like, um, like like is there another weekend I can try out because I have a wedding I got to go play. At. It's like <laughs> four days. I've got stuff to do, guys. Four days. Four days before the wedding. And I'm like, I can't, I can't, I, mean, I can't do this. I mean, you got Bridezilla, you got everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, they're going to kill me. And, uh, and and I was like, I can't, I can't do this. I was I'm sorry. There's no other time. They're like, no, this is the final rounds, blah, blah, blah. And so um, I told her no. I hung up. And uh, so then, like, five minutes later, I get a phone call. It's John Rich. And I've known John for a long time, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, being back and forth in Nashville and stuff. And, and uh, like, at, th- at this point, I already had – like I said, I already had the late winter. I yeah. already been, been going there for a while, so I knew a lot of people there. And uh, and so so John calls me and, from Big and Rich, obviously yeah, from Big and Rich. Yep. Uh, so John Rich calls me and he's like, Gabe, he's like, you got to be on the show. Like, uh, you know, I, I told him about you. Like, uh, you know, I want to make you a star. Blah, blah blah. Just tell me all this stuff. And so I'm like, well, damn, I got this wedding. I got this wedding. He's like, <laughs> he's like call them and tell them what's going on. I'm like, yeah, I know. I was like, all right, let me let me get back to you. And um, so Davey's over there like. I have no part of this. Like, and I, Davey didn't even know the people. They were just friends of friends. Yeah. But still, he was just like, you know, like I'm not, I'm gonna stay out of it. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I called the, I called people from the wedding and and tell them what's going on. And you know, they were bummed out. It was that silence yeah. on the phone, you know, yeah. kind of mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. And uh, so I, uh, I felt bad, but they were like, you know, we can't stop you from, you know, you move it up there. This is, you know, what you're, what you're chasing. Like, we can't stop you from doing this. You know, so I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll try to f- find somebody or do something. So, uh, so I called John back and and uh, I was like, hey man, I'm gonna do the show. He's like, damn right you are. You this and that. <laughs> He's like, I'll pumped up about it. So I ended up going, getting on the show and um, uh, doing the whole tryout stuff. And uh, I actually made it up to the people. I had never met them yet, but so after the show uh, ended, we did a uh, we did a tour and we did some other like other stuff that I did down here down south for the. Uh, for the Hondo, I was actually the Medina County Hospital. They, yeah. they did, they put a big old fundraiser deal, or concert, and I brought some friends that were on the show with me down, and we probably had about five thousand people out there. It was, it was really cool, really good, nice. good show. Yeah. And so the 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 couple that I was supposed to sing for their wedding uh, came, so I actually brought them on stage. Oh, good. And uh, sang the song I was supposed to sing for them, and told everybody the story, and and so it, it was pretty cool. I made it up to them, but yeah. So then, uh, yeah, that was all that part. But then uh, going back to John Party, so Davey was like, hey, man, like, go pick up this kid. So I go pick up John, and like I said, we moved in together, and that was right when I was um, about to get on the show. Yeah. So uh, so I had to move in with John. And a lot going on all, all around yeah, this time, yeah. I had to repack, yeah. like, all my clothes and go to Opryland Hotel where mm-hmm. we were from the show 
And so John ended up being like my plus one to all the filming. Oh, okay. Stuff. So he was always going to the shows and stuff. Is he like, in any of the episodes, like just like man, on the I, side I'd somewhere to, or I'd anything? I have to like really look because he was he was in the yeah. front row. Okay. So I'd probably really have to like look at some of the camera views and see. If I might need to get a clip if you have any <laughs> clips if it's like like old yeah. or something, and then we'll we'll so, we'll throw that in. I thought here it was pretty cool. So I always I always tell him. So he he got to experience a lot of cool things with me and during that time too. Like I mean I used to come home. He I used to bring him to Texas a lot with me and and we'd always come and we'd go straight to Brown Dodge and. And yeah. Divine and pick up a Dodge truck and yeah. drive around. They would let me. Uh, I got my Jeep truck. from uh, from Brown, actually. Brown, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. They, so they always help me out. And and so now John gets to do all that good stuff. And right. I, hey, remember when I used to? Yeah. <laughs> when I was What's doing up, that? man? Now you, got, yeah. now you got the perks. But it was, it was it was a good time. So, yeah, we uh, we did we did a lot of He'd take me to California with him. And, and uh, we're, I mean, we're still friends today. We lived together for like five years or so. And, yeah. And uh, How did the show go? The show was awesome. Uh, great experience. People all over love the show, especially down here, down south. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think that was just something that just the, the it just gave a town life and just everybody yeah. was just pumped every Monday to and this tune was, in. And this was 2007, parties. correct? 2008. 2008 is 2008. when it started airing and everything yeah, like that? for uh, nine weeks. Okay. Nine weeks on NBC, national television, because um, National Star used to be, uh, uh, if people aren't familiar with National Star too, like, you know, uh, Miranda Lambert was on the first season. Yeah, and Chris Young, right? Buddy Joel won that season. Uh, John Arthur Martinez was in there. Uh, Chris Young won his season. It was one of the yeah. middle seasons. Casey Musgrave, I think, even tried out. Uh, was it on NBC or USA, yeah. though? So, yeah, so the Chris Young won, won his middle. His season was, like, middle. And then, uh, like I said, Casey Musgraves, I think, tried out. But I don't I – don't, you, you probably have to Google. Yeah. You probably have to YouTube I, I remember it, but, I like, don't I don't. I really made any of the finals or anything like that. But I only watched, like, a little bit of USA, it, I think. And I think, I don't know if CMT. CMT, did. maybe, they or something, too. Maybe the later ones. Yeah. But then NBC bought it out, and that was the one that okay. I was on. Which was, I was glad, because, I mean, just the, the network was What huge. season was it again? Season, I was on season six. Okay. Season okay. Six. Now everybody can go back. I don't know. It might be on yeah. Netflix or something, or, 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 or um, Hulu yeah, or I one of them. I don't know what they did. Maybe. Somebody will sell it eventually, whoever <laughs> owns it, and then it'll show up on streaming. You go back and watch yeah. it. Yeah, but yeah, you can go to like just type in my name. You can see some of the episodes and stuff, and the the, the parts that I yeah. when I sang and stuff. But uh, but yeah, I mean, just the experience on that was was awesome. Uh, I mean, we were sequestered, and uh, I mean, it was just like your life is over. Yeah, kind of thing. Like you used to doing this, doing that, and your freedom, and it was just like boom. We had security people with us all the time, producers, like. We couldn't go anywhere on our own. Yeah. I mean, it was, we had a – on our wing at our hotel, we had a security guard at the end of the hallway and at the beginning beginning of the hallway. And we, we – like, there was always uh, – I think they were more concerned with, like, media people and yeah. and, and just coming to try to find us and stuff. And, and uh, Man, y'all were locked up before. It was yeah, cool, it was, you know, and, and, a couple of years it, ago. And, and it was funny, too, because they would always say, like, well, later in the show, since there's not that – you know, once there's not that many of us – uh, many of the, many of us for them to watch, yeah. watch over, it'll be, it'll get easier, but it got yeah. worse because it's, it the show got popular. popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was just like well, crazy. and it was just country though so too. Crazy. It wasn't yeah, it wasn't like Idol where like Idol's like all over the place. Yeah, and or the something voice like hadn't that. even come out yet because the yeah. voice the voice uh, took over kind of a little bit after like National yeah. Star was done, and so the uh, American Idol and National Star were pretty much the only thing on there, and and we're like pretty much one of those only shows where it was like a real true like like i mean we're chasing a dream kind of yeah too you know the the whole stories everything and and because some of the producers that were on there kind of were trying to make it a little uh, yeah like it's it's tv yeah tv and they're because they did a lot of like jersey shore a bunch of other stuff okay different companies so they try to they try to make some little drama mtv came to judson (laughs) one time uh and it was like they're doing made and it was like horrible like they're staging everything it was like not made at all. No, these these people, <laughs> these people these people will come over here and give you a paper and be like, like here, say this, but yeah. say it in your own words. I'm like, I ain't gonna say this. Like, I know what you're trying to do. Like, I was like, man, like, well, if I start feeding you lines up. like during the <laughs> podcast, I'll be like, say this, Gabe. Yeah.